So the time has come, we get to fire this up. So um, some considerations, we're gonna be throwing high pressure fuel around potentially. So just make sure, I, I must admit I've got a little paint pen, I go and mark all of my fuel lines as I'm doing them, but just, just be, you know, just be sensible. Uh, fire extinguisher, you never know, right? It's all health and safety, I know. I don't come from a health and safety era, frankly, yet. You know, let's not be a dick about it. <laughs> we, we just wanna make sure that we have like a trouble free, um, game here. So, right, first things first, we, we, we've written our base map already. One of the first things I'll do is, is I'll go through, unplug the ignition coil, um, unplug all the injectors, unplug all the outputs. Um, and what I'll do then is I'll go in and configure our TPS, because um, obviously we can't do that off the car. So we'll configure that. Um, and then we'll pull the plugs and then we'll spin the motor over. Uh, whilst we're logging in the um, trigger oscilloscope in the max ECU and we will look for um, essentially making sure we've got a good trigger from the crank and of course our unknown still our distributor of what was which is now our home sensor so we're gonna we're just gonna make sure we've got good waveforms from both of those then we're gonna fire the plugs in uh, connect up all our ignition leads again and then uh, go for the first start once we've got it started and running we can then go in and balance our throttle bodies um, and we've got to check our base timing obviously as well because as I said earlier um, we don't know entirely where our you know is 10 degrees actually 10 degrees or is 10 degrees because because we bolted this on it, it could be plus or minus three four could be more but we want to we want to just get that absolutely spot on so that we know that 10 degrees is 10 degrees so let's get these plugs out um, and then we'll do that get all the input get all the outputs unplugged and do that Rightio, um, so ECU is connected via USB, we're just going to open the Mtune software. I've already uploaded our little file that we've just completed. So we just basically need to now set our throttle position sensor, which is dead easy. Inputs, sensors, um, CLT, IAT and TPS. We've already got the Bosch sensors set up for the temperature sensors. So all we need to do really is, is set our minimum point and maximum point for the TPS. I've already set the physical maximum at 90 degrees on the throttle bodies. Um, when I fit the cable, we know that's correct. So all we've got to do is is we can check that it's actually going up and down in the in the real time data at the bottom the tps input voltage should raise up nice and gently somewhere between sort of 0.5 and 4.5 depending on the sensor so all we need to do is click get current voltage with the throttle pedal up all the way down click the same so throttle position sensor is now programmed what we'll find now is in the bottom there it will run up and down nice and smoothly with that so Job done. All we need to do now is um, we're going to now go and get a trace in the scope feature. So we'll go to the diagnostics tab and pull up trigger oscilloscope or F10. So what we want to do now is just make sure that we're getting in these in these um, areas here now a, a nice clean signal from our VR sensor, which should be like a wavy line and then a missing tooth where it will skip over. And then in the same regard, um, only a square wave from our hall sensor in the from the from the distributor so um i've got automatic sample time here set at 720 degrees so it should go to obviously the two rotations of the crank so hopefully <laughs> hopefully we should see that quite nicely on here so i'm hitting start to measure and then i'm just going to click the engine to what line okay so um what we've got here i will just um print screen what we've got here is our perfect square wave in the bottom end there from our cam sensor um, and that happens as you can see perfectly just before TDC on our rising edge um, on our crank so that is exactly where we've set that to be so hopefully we've got the basis now of a starting engine so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the end turn the turn the car back off I'm going to go round and connect everything back in um, check for fuel leaks, um, fire the fuel pump over a few more times, make sure we've got some decent pressure, um, and then we'll go for a turnkey. Right. Okay, so everything's back in now. Um, I've fitted the plugs, I've connected all our injectors, I've checked for fuel leaks, we're all good. So essentially, we're going to go for our first start. So as a general rule, I'd have the VE table up, um, I've got the logger up, um, we just want to get a start, sorry, F5, F7, F5, um, F7 is to your ignition table and F5 is to your VE table. So 
we need to know roughly how we're getting on. So what I generally tend to do is have the, the logger here. I'd wait for the lambda sensor to heat up so we know roughly how we're getting on on idle um, on start. So let's go. This is genuinely the first start. So I'm, I'm genuinely interested. We've got some very vague settings in here now and a, a little map we did on the sofa essentially. So let's um, get me on the throttle essentially and we'll uh, just see how we get on. <laughs> popping on the inlet so we know we're a bit lean. Oh. Okay. Overall I'd say that's fairly decent. So um, we're idling a bit high. Um, I'm not unhappy with that. So yeah we're actually quite rich so we were early on it was very it was very lean it was popping through the inlet. Um, now it's very rich, but that said, we're very, very cold. And the back is idling at all is a is an absolute bonus. So, okay, so now we can. Um, what I'll do now is I'll warm it up. I'm just let it get warm. Um, okay, it's really, really rich. So we'll let it get warm now, um, and then I think we'll balance the bodies and check the timing. Happy days. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. We're going back to basics a bit really here. Um, what we need to be doing is we've got the timing light just on cylinder one. Um, basically, um, what we need to try and do is just reference our timing. Just ensure that, you know, 10 degrees on the PC is 10 degrees on the crank. So this one's a little bit awkward because it's got a modified bottom pulley on it. Um, like it's slightly smaller, so yeah, the timing marks are really awkward, but essentially we've just got a set of timing, so it's, all we need to do is get this down in here and just reference it. Once we're happy that that's 10 degrees on here and it's 10 degrees on the laptop, we know we're roughly where we need to be, so all we've got to do now is push and pull that back on the laptop and uh, see where we're at. I was fortunate enough to tip X these when I had it all in fits, but it's really awkward. Okay, so looks like we're a couple of degrees out, so I'm going to go and adjust that now in our reference point on the laptop. Move that three degrees. Pretty awkward shelf. Okay, that's barely it, so happy days. Yeah, excellent. So we've got balance these now. Okay, base timing is is now perfect. Um so we've got like a decent igni uh, decent ignition timing map in there just to keep it idling for a moment until we get it on the dyno. So the next thing to do is to balance up the body. So um, this is a synchrometer. Um, it basically just measures airflow. It's, it's again, it's a real basic tool. They're only pennies. They they literally sort of come. Up. So what we're going to try and do is is put it in each one of these bell mouths and we're going to be running along and make sure that they're all plus or minus five or six percent again not a difficult job the main one to be quite honest with you is going to be this balance between the two um we'll probably find that pair wise they're absolutely fine so um again i won't bore you to tears with that there's probably plenty of guys on youtube already but basically we want to get them to like a, a sensible minimum i would say like maybe um maybe five, six, seven in that region, um, kilograms per hour of air. So we'll try and get them in that region, get them to a sensible sensible point, and hopefully we can get a nice sensible stable idle once we're on the dyno. We may adjust that at a later point, but I would say that's probably more than enough for this sort of engine. So, okay, let's go and start it up and do that.
sun's coming on. Good news. <laughs> okay. Right. right, we've got a working, running Mark One Escort. It's got to sit there with a sensible idle. Um, we've now balanced up these throttle bodies. I've um, also set the base time and ignition time incorrect, so we know that is now matching physically as it is on the software. So uh, we are essentially ready now to um, pop this on the dyno and scream her and see what she's got to say for herself. So, right, let's uh, put it back in there, and uh, you know we'll move this Audi out now, and we'll um, we'll throw this old girl on there, and we'll uh, we'll get it going and uh, see how we get on. Right, let's do that. So, got Will's escort onto the dyno. We're strapped in. Um, we're just going to now connect some DAQ to the to the engine. So so the dyno knows we're going to use uh, this one connects into an injector, um, and that allows us to pick up an RPM signal. Um, and it also allows us to um, a bit of a sanity check. It will give us duty cycle to the injector um, as an after. You know, so the ECU has calculated it, outputted it. Is it the same? It's just just sanity checks. Data. You can't get enough data, right? So. What I plan on doing is, uh, so we've already set our, we know our timing is now correct. Our zero degrees is zero degrees onto the ECU is actually equates to that physically to the engine. So we're just connecting up the car now. Part of um, so part of the DAQ that we're going to use is is we're going to put a knock sensor on. Um, the Pinto engine obviously would never have come with a knock sensor. However, this is a 205 block Pinto, which is the same as the YB Cosworth block, um, and the YB Cosworth block has a knock sensor. Well, some of the, the later ones did. Um, so we're going to bolt this knock sensor just down there in situ of where the original um, YB would have. Um, you'll. Wherever you go, you might be doing this yourself, as I say, um, wherever you go, they'll have like a load of little adapters and stuff um, for just this. If you're going to make your own adapter, um, this is just an M10 bolt head. Um, I've drilled and tapped an M6 thread in there. Um, just make sure that the the flat, the, the top is flat. Like just file it flat. Make sure the knock sensor gets good purchase and sensible on, uh, a sensible contact to there. Um, very often these bolts have like their tensile strength um, just pressed into the top from when they're forged. So it's say like 8.8 .8 or you know 10.9, whatever. So just, just file that out so it's nice and flat. Um, and then there'll be a torque setting for the knock sensor. So we'll bolt that into the block. Um, then I've just got like my M6 cap head here. We're just going to bolt that into there. Um, onto the block so we'll bolt that into there and then we'll get the cables round into the cabin um, where we can listen to knock um, what we've got at the back is um, I've got like a wide band sensor which goes on like a, a pipe which goes up into the exhaust we just call it our sniffer it's just for a sanity check really we'll be using the wide band in the ECU if we've got like a difference massively then we'll know there's something afoot so we can investigate that as I say keep your keep reiterating it the more data we've got the the better the end tune will be so we're all strapped down strapped over the axle it's a live axle um, we've got a wide band sniffer on I've got a couple of uh, I've got a couple of these that we can move around like they're uh, that just hold my extraction um, so yeah, okay, let's get in now, get the car started and we'll uh, see how we get on. So you can see me in this part of the video tuning the VE table. Once the cells are blue, tuned or grey, locked, I'm happy. I like to ensure I've individually tuned every single cell in the VE table and the ignition table in this case up to around 5,000, 5,500 in steady state. This should give a nice driving vehicle on the road and give me peace of mind that it's all correct. If you'd like to see how to do this yourself, I've got some other videos on YouTube explaining how to tune your VE table, please take a look. Once I've completed the actual tuning using steady state, I'll then move over and do a few power runs and of course log the data through MTune and on the dyno. I think um, power runs probably take up maybe 5-10% to 10 of the actual tuning process, although it's perceived that that's all we do, is just do some power runs, but it's majoritively using steady state.
right, so we're all finished now. Um, a few hours, like you know, about average tune time for one of these. So we've essentially ended up with uh, the maximum was 135 horsepower, which is fairly good. It's um, you know, it's a cammed, lightly tuned engine body. Obviously, this um, exhaust pipe, but yeah, I'm not not unhappy with that really. So yeah, it's all tuned. Um, time to pull it out, sort this dash pod, and uh, give it back to Will, and hope he's happy. Okay. So, what are we doing now, mate? We're loading the car up, aren't we, on the trailer? Say hello. Hi. <laughs> loading the car up on the trailer. And what are we going to do? We're going to go and see Tom. Yeah, and then we're going to drop this car off at him. Going to drop that car. We know we're going to take the car to him, and he's yeah. going to do the alignment because we've reset the suspension for Will. Yeah. And then, but we don't have alignment equipment or corner weight equipment, so we're going to go and see Tom over at Swallows, aren't we? And what's he going to do? Is he going to set it all up for us? And we're gonna have pizza hut. So yeah, let's uh, let's get this car strapped on, and then we'll go and see Tom, and we'll get this all aligned. Yeah. So yeah, have pizza hut. <laughs> Thank you.